Greetings! You want to send your Logic Pro tracks to a friend or associate or have them mixed in Atmos at a professional studio, but you are unsure of how to do that correctly? First, it is important to have this down. Tracks versus stems. Tracks are single audio files, mono or stereo, say a mono guitar track or a stereo keyboard track. For a multi-track Atmos mix, you will have some mono, like the lead vocal for example, and some stereo tracks, like a stereo keyboard track. If you want your friend that you are collaborating with, or the mixing engineer you will send this out to, to put their own flair on it, then you simply export it dry. If you want that stereo keyboard part to come with that gorgeous processing you put on it, distortions, delays, reverbs, etc., they are part of the sound, then you export it with all that processing. So here's our gorgeous keyboard part. How do we export it? Go to File, Export, one track as audio file. Boom. It'll show you all these things here that you need to do. Let's go through the options. You can trim the silence at file end, which is okay, or you can extend file length to project end. Just make sure that you have, where's my project end here? Woo, right? So you drag this guy over so this is my project end, let's say, right? Leave a little bit of extra space here for uh, mastering stuff, for reverb tails, right? Okay, so here's what we want to export. We go to File. I know you can't see that, but uh, it's under the File menu. File, Export, one track as audio file. Let's select Trim Silence at File End. Okay, now if we want to print the chroma glow on it, we do not push this, we do not click this. If we want just the file without the chroma glow, we say, hey, my collaborator friend, hey, mixing engineer, treat that as you wish to make it the best it can in the mix, then I don't include it and I click bypass effect plugins, right? Now, if I have done any automation or any volume or any panning for an Atmos mix, I don't suggest you include the panning and the uh, volume automation. But if you want to, it's here, right? And you can include the tempo information as well and so on and so forth. Now, in this case, we wanted to print that chroma glow. That type of distortion is part of the sound that we created, and we want that. We don't want anybody to, to mess with the actual sound, with the, 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 the identity of the sound, right? So let's not bypass the effect plugins. Normalization usually off, okay? And here's where you can actually use so the track name is the pattern and the custom, and the custom, let's say, for Atmos, okay? So you see what that becomes like. It's 80s romance electric piano for Atmos, okay? Make sense? So you click export, boom, and it goes into the folder that you've specified before. In this case, it's just in the bounces, but you can select a different folder. Okay, so let's go to our snare here. You see I have a compressor on it and I'm using a send. I'm sending this to my chroma verb through auxiliary one, right? So we can do the same thing, right? So here's my pop snare. I'll go to file, export, one track as audio file, command E, is your key command, okay? So here's all our stuff, but here's the caveat. You will not export the snare reverb. So how do we do that? We select this and the auxiliary. We go to our bounce, 
snare with verb. Now another way to do that would be simply to use a uh, reverb only for the snare that is actually a plugin here in the uh, in the track and just and just print that as as an effect using the other way that we showed before right if you don't have uh, if you have enough processing power you don't need a, a reverb to be shared through an aux right but here's another way that you can do these things if we go to our mixer you'll see here's our auxiliary track if we right click on it we can click create track boom so it actually created a track right now when we select those two tracks and we go to file export two tracks as audio files with verb for Atmos. Export. Boom. Now, if we had included, let me see if we did include it here. Export, two tracks as audio files. See, if I had added these, add the resulting files to project browser, I could go to my project browser up here and then add those directly. Now I have to go hunt for them. Okay, so I found the track. I have it, I put it on my desktop. Okay, let me just take it and put it into the project. But, check this out. It says they are not an audio track, right? Because this is the auxiliary track. Okay, you can do automation, you can do all kinds of different stuff, but this is not an audio track. So basically what you need to do is you basically just create another track. You name it, of course, whatever you want and actually there it will name it by itself automatically this is your auxiliary one with verb for atmos and so on and so forth and here if you don't need this you can go ahead and hide that track and now you have the verb for your uh, for your snare separately from the snare and did you also see here the edge this means there was a reverb tail, right? So it's good that we left a little bit of extra space for that reverb tail. So the same thing you would do for different auxes. Gather them all, make them tracks, export them. What about stems? Stems are two or more tracks mixed together. Let's say you have six separate guitar tracks or four keyboard tracks or 50 background vocal tracks. You can mix those to one stereo track. Well, one for the guitars, one for the keyboards, one for the BGVs and so on. And now those would be the guitar stem, the keyboard stem, the background vocal stem. Get it? Here's what to be careful of though. Effects and processing. You might want those gorgeous effects you worked on to be part of the sound overall. Or you might want to give your collaborator or your mixing engineer the leeway to morph it the way they seem fit, especially in an immersive audio situation. Then you print those effects separately. For me, it is easier if these are named bus or FX as part of the naming convention. If you send the effects auxes to an FX bus, you can include all of those effects in one stem, but that gives me much less leeway to craft the mix, especially for Atmos. By the way, all these concepts apply to all DAWs, really. Just the way to do it differs. Let's say we wanted to do our guitar uh, stems, our guitar tracks, get them out to a stereo stem. There's five tracks right here. What do we do with those? How do we export them as a stem, right? There's a couple of different ways. First, with various levels of control, okay? So let's select them all 
and now we're going to hit bounce. If these were going out to an auxiliary, an extra reverb or something, we would also solo that. Okay? So let's solo these. We'll hit bounce. Let's click OK. It's not snare with verb, but it's guitar stem. And you can say with effects or without effects. Okay? So let's bounce this. Oh, I had this selected, so it just uh, bounced this. So let's unselect it, go to bounce, click OK. Everything is OK. Click OK. We'll name it what we want. I'll name it guitar stem with effects and then hit bounce and it will bounce the whole thing up to the project end. Okay, so if this is out here, it will bounce it up to there. So here are our guitars. Let's create an audio file. Let's name it guitar stem. And here's our guitar stem. We'll drop it in. And there you go. This is our guitar stem. But with this way, be very careful because you have no way of controlling the volume automation or the pan. Whatever you bounce will include that information in there. So let's say that you just wanted those guitar tracks without the panning all separately. You would select those, of course, right? You don't need to have them soloed. And then we do what we did before. Go to File, Export, Five Tracks as Audio Files, right? And here you have the option to actually bypass the effects plugins, include or not include the volume and pan automation, and what have you, okay? So one thing that's kind of a pain uh, that it's not included yet is the um, very speed effect. Okay, let's let's look at that. It's a very very cool effect. I don't have it here. There it is. So, all right. So this is the very speed, speed and pitch. Okay, so you can change things to change their speed. Basically, it's some sort of a stretch algorithm that used to exist in in tape machines and stuff, even small multi-track tape recorders. Right, it's used as a creative effect and all kinds of stuff. I use it uh, sometimes to control transfers when I have to match a, an older stereo mix that was mixed to a two track stereo that had a different tape speed because they used to play with that in mastering back in the day to give more punch and stuff to recordings. So I have to match the multitracks. The multitracks and the two-track master tape, they were different speeds. So you have to find the actual speed and blah, 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 right? So you calculate it, it comes up, but then you cannot export the file as a very speed file. The only way you can do it is through uh, bounce. You solo the track as we did before, and let's say you solo this, well, they're all selected here. You solo this using very speed, and then you bounce. Whatever gets bounced out includes the very speed information. It's been very sped, I guess. One little detail that you have to pay attention to, right? There is another way you can export audio as regions. When you select the region, right click, export one region as audio file. When you export that region, it will export this region as an audio file, not its space within your whole project, right? So how do you know where that audio goes? You don't. Uh, so you have to export track so it can export from the beginning until the end. Here's a very cool little uh, tip for you. So let's say we have these, let's say we have this chromatic funk. 
take your marquee tool and select this part. Now hit J. Aha! Amazing. Love this tip. So now when you export this, your beginning will be the beginning. So you can export this as um, export one region as audio file. So then you can take that, drop it into a track, and it will start from the beginning. For more Atmos and Logic tips and tricks, here's a playlist right here.